Good news, everyone. We remembered our YouTube password. <laughs> I could lie and tell you that I've spent the last year troubleshooting my system, a single PC with both an AMD and an RTX graphics card. The internet and the old wisdom would say that I'm begging for an unstable system and that I'll be plagued by blue screens and driver timeouts and, you know, maybe fires, I don't know. Funny thing though, it just works. I'm sure you're wondering why. Well, let's uh, look at the market and talk about it right now. If you're using a humble 20 series GPU, you know, like a 2060 or a 2070, your card's really starting to feel the pain of modern games being optimized and eating every scrap of VRAM you can offer like it's Google Chrome. So you look into upgrading to a shiny new 40 series card. The GPU crisis is over after all, so they're in stock. Well, you're kind of in a weird spot. A 4060 Ti can be bought with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. But other than that, you gotta save up your cash for at least a 4070 Ti Super, which is very, very clear and not confusing at all, NVIDIA. Where's the 4070 Ti Super Plus Plus Skylake Edition? The next response is, well, what about AMD or, you know, Intel? They make GPUs, right? Intel is, well, uh, it's for the bravest souls. At least their first gen ARC cards are. Hopefully, you know, their second gen, which I think just got kind of detailed or announced at least, will be a bit better. You know, they've been doing some good work optimizing and enabling driver support for DX9 <laughs> and everything else, so good for them. AMD though. Well, AMD actually has some good options. You can get a 7800 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM for just under $500. I mean, I even went on Amazon to check, like 479, 484, the GRE is like 550. Like, you know, they make some pretty good deals here for, for VRAM. If you're, you know, trying to upgrade from an eight gig card, you don't want to upgrade to 12. That just doesn't feel right if you're spending $500. Or if uh, you're buying a 4070 Ti Super, like 800, $900, depending on, you know, which card you're buying and how many fans it has. The downside though is that, you know, you do have to give up DLSS, fast ray tracing, NVENC encoding, CUDA in general, and, you know, NVIDIA broadcast. That is, unless you do something crazy like I did and keep your NVIDIA card and run both at the same time. It's honestly crazy how well it works though. You know, there, there are some caveats though. Well, first you need a case and motherboard big enough to handle that. And it's definitely gonna need excellent airflow. That second card is probably gonna be blocking off the first fan or two of your Radeon and it will be a little asthmatic. The thing's gonna be just <gasps> trying as hard as it can. But if you've got good airflow and a good enough case like I do, it actually doesn't overheat that much in gaming workloads. Second, you need a good power supply. Now, I didn't say great power supply, I just said good. So as long as you don't buy one of those gigabyte, you know, the bomb has been planted power supplies or you're not using some no name Great Wall or something manufactured in a place you can't pronounce power supply, you'll probably be okay. I'm using both of my cards, which is a 6900 XT and a 3060 12 gig on a 750 watt power supply. And it honestly doesn't have any issues since I can't really think of a scenario where I'm gonna be loading up both my Radeon and my Nvidia card and my CPU all at the same time. Third, you just have to accept that things won't always just work perfectly. I've had issues in some games, especially Cyberpunk, that'll crash on launch every time if it detects a second Nvidia card with RTX. You try and launch it with your Radeon and the Nvidia card's in there, it just says something about ray tracing initialization and it just says new, no, crashes the desktop every time. It, you're gonna have to be a little inventive or a little brave too because there aren't a lot of people doing this. Most people are, well-adjusted and sane and run one card. You run two different cards at the same time, you're, you're gonna have very little tech support and it's, it's a challenge. You know, there are workarounds. The easy way is to just go into device manager and disable the offensive card that's causing the crash. I used to do that for Cyberpunk, just disable 3060 and come back to it later and re-enable it. It's works just fine. Or you can kind of learn Steam launch parameters, modifying like the shortcuts and stuff like that. I invented a parameter for Cyberpunk and you know, I'll put it up on the screen in a minute there. All you're doing is selling it no ray tracing, which is fine. You're, you're not running ray tracing on an AMD card anyways. It's not a good time. Besides that though, everything else has been great. So if you've been following the news at all, I'm sure everyone is talking about AI still. That's kind of the go-to. 
And running things like Stable Diffusion or Flux is the, is the spicy new model that everyone wants to run. They don't really run too well on AMD cards. If you have a 7000 series, like a 7900 XT, XTX, then yeah, you actually do have a little bit of support, but there's a lot of hoops to jump through. And yeah, I know it can be done, but let me know in the comments if you actually want me to dive into running AI on AMD in Windows. That is a, an entirely new video on its own. Nothing is easy there. But if you're running two cards, I mean, I just installed Stable Diffusion using um, the Forge web UI. There, you know, there's many different ones you can run. This one just runs the best on cards without a ton of VRAM, which I'm assuming if you're running from a 2070 or 2060, you don't have a ton. It honestly worked out of the box. I didn't have to change any INI files, change any command lines, do anything crazy. It just saw that I had CUDA installed and said, you got it boss, and just started running on the 3060. You have to do the work to make it even notice the 6900 XT. So in this case, it's great. You know, I have Forge up here, and, you know, just type in a prompt, hit go. And where's my task manager? Here it is. So you see it's generating an image pretty quickly. This is just Stable Diffusion 1.5 based, whatever. And the card's loaded up with VRAM, it's working hard, and my Radeon is just kinda hanging out. It's just displaying an image. Those of you might catch on here that, why is he using 10 gigs to run 1.5 model? Well, the funny thing is, actually I hope it doesn't cause the stream to lag now that I think about it, the recording, is I'm recording this using NVENC on the AMD. I'm using the NVIDIA card right now with NVENC to record the stream just fine. I'm using the card to do stable diffusion. Like, look, funny picture of a, of a guy gaming. You've also got things like, you know, your text generation. So chat GPT at home, like literally it's the one you have at home. It, you need a pretty beefy computer to run the actual smart ones. But this this will do the job. So I'm gonna ask you right now. Can I use AMD and NVIDIA graphics in the same computer? Let's see what Llama 3 Instruct thinks. Oh, oh, here it goes. It's warning me about conflicting drivers. Yep. Ooh, gotta be careful. Okay, thanks GPT knockoff. <laughs> um, resource competition, memory and CPU time. What are you doing? You're not doing... So <laughs> and I was talking about SLI and Crossfire. <laughs> when was this trained? <laughs> but anyways, it works just fine. And you can also run this kind of stuff on an AMD card in Windows. That actually works pretty well. Just not you're making funny meme pictures or whatever. The 3060 also offers something else, which is a choice to not use as much power when you're gaming. I mean, if you're running old school RuneScape or, you know, Dwarf Fortress, <sighs> League of Legends, you know, you don't need to run a full 250, 290 watt graphics card. Like those games will run just fine on a potato and lucky for you, you have a potato in your system already. Just use it. And that'll help keep your power bills a little bit lower. And you know, if you're somewhere that doesn't have air conditioning all the time, like, It'll keep your room a little bit cooler too. The Radeon gets pretty spicy if you leave it alone. One of the concerns would be your thermals. It's pretty easy to imagine the big card that's getting suffocated by your you know, backup NVIDIA card running into thermal issues. Now, it does look pretty cozy in my case with both cards, but honestly, the thermals have not been an issue in gaming. If I do something like Furmark or 3 d Mark or some synthetic benchmark, then yeah, I, I'll run into some thermal problems. That's understandable. But if I'm just playing games like a normal person, you know, it, it doesn't run into any problems. I have even modded the BIOS on this card to use 350 watts and I was not thermally throttling. I was just still running out of wattage because the card is so thirsty. <laughs> So honestly, that's not too big of a problem as long as you have some good case fans and you know, you can always undervolt a little bit too. I undervolt my card, not just because I'm worried about it overheating, but because it actually just runs faster. Power draw is fine, I say, as the lights <laughs> flicker when I turn on the benchmark. 292 watts, because I got it maxed out. You know, it's not really throttling. It's running 84, 83C. Don't ask me about the hot spot temperature. If I don't know about it, it's not a problem. <laughs> This card runs fine and I've tried to stress out the 3060 and honestly the cooler for that card is kind of overbuilt for that little GPU. No problems on that one either. 
while we're recording OBS because I'm using a second GPU for that. <clears throat> you know, people go and buy entire PCs to be streamers. Like, oh, I gotta have my separate little box over here with its own card to, to record everything. I mean, do you have to? I, I don't. And as long as you're running a modern CPU with more than like four cores, four threads. So, you know, obviously don't use a, uh, uh, what is it? What, what would it be, a 40? A framework laptop. <laughs> as long as you're not using something like a 6500 or like an overpriced laptop from some vendor. You'll have enough threads where honestly, it won't be that big of an issue. If you're like really paranoid about it, you can use something like Process Lasso and you know, isolate the recording and everything else to a different set of cores. That's actually kind of the, the big benefits or big feature of the you know, current Intel CPUs from I think what 12th gen is when they introduced efficiency cores. And yeah, just isolate OBS to that. Be like, sorry, you don't get the good cores. That's for Skyrim. I almost forgot about my favorite feature, NVIDIA broadcast. Now, I know I made a video a while ago talking about AMD's driver features and how it has noise suppression, just like NVIDIA, but it kind of doesn't work very well at all ever most of the time. It's pretty awful. <laughs> Honestly, before I had the, the NVIDIA card in the system, I just turned Discord's crisp thing on and it worked 10 times better and way more reliably than the AMD one. That's kind of a trend with AMD. They, they, they try to do things and then they kind of get distracted and forget about it. It's the same thing Google does with literally everything that isn't YouTube or Gmail. The same thing we do. Well. I, 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 don't, I don't like those accusations, Gab. But yeah, I mean, if you've ever used NVIDIA Broadcast, it's a pretty cool piece of software. Where is it, right here? Yeah. And you got your noise cancellation, your echo cancellation, all that stuff. You should all know about that. And right now what I'm doing is I'm using my phone as a webcam because despite having cameras to film, I'm still too cheap to buy a $20 Logitech webcam. I'll use my phone in an app. Thanks. So, you know, you got your funny little effects going on. Like, oh, look, it's me. I'm on video. Let me just turn on, you know, something fun like background replacement. So it's me and my two, you know, two best friends here working in harmony. You know, Intel CEO is not here. He's crying in front of a dumpster as everything burns, but hopefully they get their stuff together. But I mean, honestly, there's a lot of potential in a system like this. I even run my second monitor on the Nvidia card just because it's got its own little video buffer. And if you've ever played a game that's using 99.99% of your graphics card, you can't watch YouTube or Twitch in a second monitor. It will just freeze or stop giving you video or just, it's a bad experience. But running it off the second card, you know, it's an expensive way to solve a very minor problem. It's kind of nice. And there are always other things too, like, I've also made videos on AMD and fixing their VR problems. Thanks for the support on that one, but it still doesn't fix their problems. It just makes them more bearable. I don't know why, but Beat Saber runs terribly on my Radeon card still. Everything else perfectly fine, but the 3060 runs Beat Saber 10 times better. So I just unplug the monitor and <laughs> run the 3060 as the main. You have a lot of options like that. It's a really cool way to embrace the flexibility of PC gaming. If you're brave, you can do anything you want. It's really cool. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. You know, like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you're upset that I'm back and you forgot you subscribed. <laughs> or uh, hop in the Discord if you have some ideas for this system or something similar. You know, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again in less than a year.